Don't you cry no more. When things go bump in the night, these boys bump back. I mean, normal people, they see a monster and they run, but not us. No, no, no. We, we search out things that want to kill us. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Supernatural episodes. Sam starring as Lucifer, Dean starring as Michael. For this list, we've selected the best of the best when it comes to episodes of this long-running fantasy horror series. We've chosen our entries based on their quality, popularity, and memorability. Pudding! Alright, come on you two. Crazy works. As you'd expect, this list is full of spoilers, and as such, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Never underestimate the King of Hell, darling. Number 10, Wendigo. One more time, that's... Anasazi symbols. It's for protection. The Wendigo can't cross over. Hot off the heels of its debut, the series hits the ground running with this thriller of an episode that sees the Winchesters tracking down and consequently being hunted by a cannibalistic creature called a Wendigo. Whatever we're talking about, we're talking about a creature and its corporeal which means we can kill it. While we weren't under any illusions that our heroes would die in episode two, seeing Dean hung up in the Wendigo's den definitely gave us white knuckles. Hey, you okay? <clears throat> yeah. In between the scares, there were also conversations between the brothers that gave deeper glimpses into their characters. What was Sam's growing need for vengeance and Dean's desire to find and please their father? How do you do it? <laughs> How does dad do it? With a good balance of tension and character study, the episode was an excellent way to carry over high from the pilot. <laughs> Number 9. What is and what should never be. Oh, Jessica. Uh, good to see you too, Dean. <laughs> By this point in the series, it had clearly been established that both of the Winchesters want a life outside of being hunters. Whatever's gotten into you? I like it. Fittingly enough, Dean awakens one day to find his life practically perfect in every way. Come on, man, look at us. Huh? We both have beautiful women on our arms. You're engaged? Let's go celebrate. His mother is still alive, he's dating a gorgeous nurse, and Sam even has the love of his life back. Unfortunately, this ideal life is a false one. As in reality, Dean has been captured and is slowly being sucked dry by a gin. Wake up. Wake up, Dean. <laughs> When push comes to shove, the older Winchester is given the choice to either stay in his paradise or face the cold hard truth. While he chooses the latter, the pain of that choice strikes a particularly tearful chord and makes this an utterly unforgettable episode. Should have seen it, Sam. Our lives. You were such a wussy. <laughs> Number 8, Baby. They had a message to deliver. They said the darkness is coming. What would this franchise be without the Impala? The signature ride of our two heroes has been with them through thick and thin. And for once, we see the entire narrative completely from the car's perspective. Welcome to ML's home of the world. Yeah, listen, uh, Jesse, not a scratch. Seemingly mundane moments that wouldn't normally be shown in your typical Supernatural episode are shown in this Season 11 episode, such as the arduous process of researching the monster of the week. You find anything in the lore? Well, there is a creature that feeds on hearts and blood. A werepire, you might say. Come on, I know you want to say it. In the lore, it's referred to as a whisper. It's lame. As well as the Winchester's morning routines. Who are you? Oh, uh, good morning. While the subplot involving what they think to be a werewolf is intriguing, the real treat is the unique route Baby took to telling its story. <sighs> Uh, turns out I did shoot the deputy. Number seven, the monster at the end of this book. It was a blueprint of what not to do. I mean, if the pages say that we go left, then we go right. While Supernatural may be a much-loved piece of fiction in and of itself, the last thing Dean and Sam themselves probably expected to find out was that their entire lives have been printed in a series of fantasy novels. <laughs> You're kidding me, right? You think this is funny? You don't? The author of said books turns out to be a rather skittish man named Chuck, who is revealed to be a prophet of God that is able to foresee the events in their lives before they come to pass. Writing yourself into the story is one thing, but as a prophet? That's like M. Night-level douchiness. Unfortunately for Sam, this includes an encounter with the demonic Lilith, in which they are destined to get frisky with one another. Hello, Sam. I've been waiting for you. 
While Chuck's prophecies don't come to pass in the exact way the Winchesters thought they would, they do raise some vital points about Sam's unsettling desire for revenge. She was telling the truth about one thing. What's that? She's not gonna survive the apocalypse. I'll make sure of that. Number six, fan fiction. Is this some kind of a joke to you? It's no secret that Supernatural has a fiercely devoted fan community, and the creators have certainly tipped their hats to them in episodes such as The Real Ghostbusters. We gotta do something. Why? Because. That's what Sam and Dean would do. However, for their special 200th episode, they went all out with one of the most meta of all Supernatural episodes. I kind of hate the meta stories. Me too. While investigating the disappearance of a teacher, the Winchesters discover that her students are putting on a musical based on Chuck's books. And the production even makes references to popular fanfiction tropes such as Destiel and Wincest. You know they're brothers, right? Well, duh. But... Subtext. Why don't you take a sub-step back there, ladies? Despite how awkward the subjects can be, the episode still radiates a great appreciation for the fan community, known as the SBN family, that helped make Supernatural what it is today. So why this story, huh? Why, uh, Supernatural? Supernatural has everything. Number five, the end. I'm gonna hunt him down, Dean. Oh, so we're back to revenge then, are we? Yeah, because that worked out so well last time. Not revenge. Redemption. The threat of Lucifer and his goal of possessing Sam is present in pretty much every episode of the fifth season, but nowhere was this made all the more apparent than when Dean finds himself in the near future, where the Winchesters have lost the final battle. You are not you, not now you anyway. No. Yeah, yes, exactly. What year are you from? 2009. Both Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles really get to stretch their acting muscles here, as they play much darker versions of the regular characters. This isn't your time, it's mine. You don't make the decisions I do. So when I say stay in, you stay in. The conflict between Dean and his much more militaristic, unforgiving future self raises questions about his reluctance to accept his position as Michael's vessel, while the confrontation with the Lucifer-possessed Sam was as awesome as it was heartbreaking. Look what six billion of you have done to this thing. And how many of you blame me for it? Number four, changing channels. Oh, Dean. <laughs> We have some more research to do. <laughs> when Supernatural wants to go all out with its comedy, it goes all out. Hey there, Sam. What's happening? Oh, nothing. Um, just the end of the world. <laughs> the return of the trickster throws Sam and Dean in an alternative universe that parodies all manner of popular television shows. From wacky Japanese game shows to over-the-top sitcoms, cheesy but sexy medical dramas, Knight Rider, and even a commercial about genital herpes, this episode is high on laughs. I am doing all I can to slightly lessen the spread of, of genital herpes. But it's also just grounded enough to keep the narrative running smoothly. While the reveal of the trickster turning out to be the angel Gabriel was a decent enough twist, we can't get over that shot Sam took to the crotch. Brutal. <laughs> Number three, Lazarus Rising. Surprise. At the conclusion of the third season, we were greeted by the lovely sight of Dean getting ripped apart and getting sent straight to hell. It turns out to not be a permanent stay, however, as he is raised from perdition by a celestial being who later becomes everyone's favorite angel, Castiel. Who are you? Castiel. Yeah, I figured that much. I mean, what are you? I'm an angel of the Lord. This episode not only reintroduced the brothers in a shocking but heartwarming reunion. I look fantastic, huh? But also the first stepping stone towards what would become the battle between hell and heaven, with the Winchester boys and the rest of humanity stuck in the middle. Not to mention Castiel's one heck of a badass entrance. Number two, The French Mistake. Should we be killing anybody? I don't think so. It's a premise so hilarious that it can only be pure gold. I feel sick. I'm gonna be sick. In an effort to save the Winchesters from one of Raphael's assassins, Balthazar sends the brothers to a parallel universe that is scarily similar to our own. How was work today, hon? However, rather than being the supernatural hunters we know and love, in the alternate reality, Sam and Dean are mere characters on the supernatural series we know and love. Kind of. For whatever reason, our life is a TV show. Why? 
I don't know. No, seriously, why? Why would anybody want to watch our lives? Well, I mean, according to the interviewer, not very many people do. Meta to the core, the irony level is off the charts in The French Mistake, as Sam and Dean, uh, Jared and Jensen, encounter Supernatural's creators, a Twitter-obsessed Misha Collins, Hola, Misha amigos, and even some of Jensen Ackles earlier acting performances. What do you think I really care about money? Nicole, I care that you're healthy. Well, I'm no quitter, Eric. I, I... Of course, none of it compares to watching Sam and Dean trying and failing to act. There's a key. There must also be a lock. Cut! Before we reveal our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Give me a sign. Because if you don't, I'm going to... I'm going to do whatever I... Whatever I must. We've been looking for you for a long time. Well, you found me. But the holy water. You think something like that works on something like me? Man, I had a weird dream. Yeah? Clowns or midgets? Look, I've done a lot for this town. Some you know about. Some you don't. And I'm not real good at this whole asking for help thing. Dad's on a hunting trip. And he hasn't been home in a few days. Number one, Swan Song. These are the things that make the car theirs. Really theirs. In the finale of season five, all hope seems lost, as Lucifer is taking control of Sam. Come on, Sam. You have to admit, you can feel it, right? What? The exhilaration. He's also on the verge of clashing with the Archangel known as Michael, the result of which would be a battle that would bring about the apocalypse. You're a monster, Lucifer. I have to kill you. Castiel and Dean thus launch a final assault that ends as well as you might expect it to. Hey, ass butt. Ass butt? However, before Lucifer can kill Dean, Sam takes control at the last second, willingly throwing himself and the devil inside of him back into Lucifer's cage in hell. Dean is left broken due to the loss of his brother, which prompts him to return to an old flame so he can try to live a normal life. Are you alright? Yeah. The episode's ending may be bittersweet, but if this was how Supernatural as a series was to end, it would have certainly been a high note to go out on, and that's why it's our number one pick. No doubt, endings are hard. But then again, nothing ever really ends. Do you agree with our list? I'm gonna become a hunter. What's your favorite episode of Supernatural? I want it! Want it! Still alive. For more fantasy top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo.